Hello, my name is Mary Beth, and I'm from Exogen, the company that invented and makes the temporal artery thermometer, right here in the USA. And you'll be happy to know that the development of this thermometer included significant input from a team of nurses, including me. I'll be going over the thermometer's use and care today. I know we don't have much time, so come on, let's get started. Oh, I've heard about these. I have a home model temporal scanner that I love, and with three kids, I use it all the time. I'd like to begin with a kind of a Simon Says demonstration, just to show you how to use the temporal scanner. So everyone, and I promise you I won't say Simon Says this, please follow me. Place your finger in the center of your forehead, slide it in a straight line over to your hairline, lift your finger off your forehead, and touch that little soft depression on your neck just below your earlobe. It's the place where Mom used to teach us to put perfume. Sorry, gentlemen. If you had had the Exogen Temporal Scanner in your hand, you would have just taken the fastest, gentlest, most accurate temperature in the world. Hey, what's up? Hi, we're having an in-service for the Temporal Scanner Thermometer. Will you join us? No, don't need to. I already know how to use it. Would you just quickly demonstrate for me before you leave? See? (laughs) Well, you got it half right. The part behind my ear. Wait a minute. It's right here, by the way. Uh, wrong. Okay, back to school, Smarty. The superficial temporal artery is up in the forehead, but varies in exact location from person to person. We need to cross the artery, so think T for temporal artery, and the rest is easy. Just cross the T's. (laughs) See? Not this. (laughs) It certainly looks like we have our patient and our nurse educator. Thank you both. (laughs) I couldn't have demonstrated it better myself. Curving down the side of the face is probably the most common error we see, so don't feel badly. Our target is the superficial temporal artery at the forehead, not at the temple. At the temple, the artery can be too deep to register, or you might just miss it entirely. Green is cold and red is hot. We want the red. This is the superficial temporal artery at the forehead. You can see that you'll miss the artery if you curve the scan down the face. A quick rule of thumb. If you have to remove your patient's glasses, you've done it wrong. I'm going to borrow your demonstration. Oh, no. The three lines indicate where the temporal artery might be. We can't actually see it since we don't have infrared eyes, and palpating is impractical. Remember, think T for temporal artery, and cross the T's. If you can scan all the way across the forehead into the hairline, you cannot miss the artery and you will always cross the T. May I borrow you from my model? Depending on the patient, you would first wipe the probe head with an alcohol prep pad, as you would with your stethoscope. Aren't we going to need disposable covers like our old thermometers? No. With the temporal scanner, you are not contacting any mucous membranes. So, in most cases, covers are not required. More than 90% of the hospitals using Exigen temporal scanner thermometers have approved wiping with an alcohol prep pad. The alcohol swab, plus the protection of the silver ion antimicrobial head, give you the most protection and the least cost. Alcohol swabs cost a fraction of a penny. However, should the hospital prefer additional protection for certain patient populations, we offer disposable caps, which can be reused on the same patient. And for isolation patients, We offer a long tubular sheath that encloses the entire thermometer for optimum protection. Now back to taking your temperature. After wiping the probe head, brush away any hair or anything else that might be covering the forehead or the ear. Okay, now with the probe flush on her forehead, depress the button and keep it depressed until you are done. Slide straight across the forehead, crossing the T's, not down the side of the face. Scan in a straight line to cross the T's and you'll never miss the artery. Continue to hold the button down, touch the neck behind the earlobe, the perfume spot. Now you let go of the button and read the temperature. The temporal scanner pinpoints the highest of 3,000 temperatures to provide the most accurate temperature possible. Let's review what we have learned so far. We all know that the temporal artery comes up from the side of the face from the external carotids, but it can go deep and it won't register an accurate temperature. The superficial part of the temporal artery is our target. This is located up in the forehead, 
about two millimeters below the skin, literally trapped between the skin and the skull. It can't go anywhere. While we know the superficial part of the artery is just below the skin, its exact location varies with each individual, which is why we scan, allowing the temporal artery thermometer to locate it, something like a radar detector. The temporal scanner will indicate that you're scanning over the artery by faster beeping and faster flashing display. After you pass the artery, then the beeping and the display slow down. Why the uh, touch behind the ear? Oh, I was hoping someone was going to ask me that question. The touch behind the ear is to assure the correct reading if the patient is sweaty. If the forehead is moist, evaporative cooling will result in a low reading. However, since vasodilation is 100% assured when sweating and we sweat last on the neck, that touch on the neck just behind the earlobe will override the effect of evaporative cooling. What if they're completely sweaty? If the patient is completely sweaty, return in about 10 minutes to take the temp when they're dry. Question. Can we just take the temp on the neck behind the earlobe? It's a good question, but the answer is no. This is because vasodilation is required for the measurement. But without a Doppler, vasodilation can only be assured in the presence of diaphoresis or head trauma. Infants? They're in a constant state of vasodilation. Yes, that's true until they're a few months old when their vasomotor controls begin to mature. As vasodilation is the prerequisite for making the measurement, a gentle touch to the temporal artery area or just a two-inch scan across the temporal artery area is all that's required. And note, it's easier to depress the button before touching the infant's head. They can be a little fractious. I've heard the temperatures don't match oral temps. The temporal scanner is measuring core temperature, about one degree Fahrenheit or half a degree Celsius higher than an oral temperature. The mean normal core temperature is about 99.4 in Fahrenheit or 37.4 in Celsius versus about a 98.6 in Fahrenheit or a 37C for an oral temperature. Fever protocol will need to be adjusted upwards if your current protocol is based on an oral temperature. The temporal scanner is also available in an oral equivalent calibration. No adjustment in the oral-based fever protocol is required if you're using that calibrated model. Can anything cause high or low readings? Well, high readings are typically the result of comparing an arterial calibration temporal scanner, which has a serial number beginning with an A, so you'll know what it is, to an oral thermometer. Arterial temperature is a core temperature, and it will be higher than oral. Another reason for high temperatures is if the area being measured is not exposed. The temporal scanner is assuming that the skin that it's measuring, and skin is part of our temperature, has equilibrated to the room. So if it's covered, it's going to give you an artificially high reading. So always allow about a minute after removing a covering before taking your temp. A third possibility for high temps is inadvertently scanning a warming blanket or a radiant heater. But low readings are typically a result of a dirty lens. The lens in the probe tip needs cleaning every two weeks using a Q-tip dampened with an alcohol prep. Also, a few other reasons for low readings are not being able to reproduce the readings. Curving down the side of the face, a sweaty patient, or taking multiple temps in rapid succession on the same patient. All of these can cause false readings. Why are multiple temps an issue? Well, the cold probe is going to cool the skin, and skin is part of our measurement. If you just wait about 30 seconds before repeating a temp on the same patient, you'll be fine. But do note that taking multiple temps in rapid succession on the same patient is something never done with an oral or a rectal thermometer. Now, as nurses, we all do this, relying on the accuracy of touching the patient, palpation, to determine fever. But here's why you should avoid this. Your hand is just not a good indicator of fever. It's subjective and it depends on the temperature difference between your hand and the patient. While palpation will be correct about 98% of the time, if the patient does not have a fever, it's going to be wrong more than half of the time if the patient does have a fever. This all sounds great, but I've always found rectal to be accurate. Let me give you a real life for instance. Recently, a doctor received word that a patient had a temp of 104. The nurses had taken four temporal artery temps using three different exogen temporal artery thermometers, and they all read 104 degrees. The doctor ordered a rectal temp for this patient, which read lower at 99.9 .9 degrees. The doctor then decided to go with the rectal, 
It's what he knew and trusted, and they sent the patient home. Fast forwarding here, it's about four hours later. True story, the patient returned in an ambulance, septic and the result of a ruptured appendix. Rectal temperature has a well-proven lag time in responding to a rapidly changing temperature. Lag time for adults can be on the order of several hours, and this is well documented since the invention of the Swangans PA catheter you know, about in the late 1960s. Lag time for infants, and not a lot of people know this, but as young as 0 to 12 months can be on the order of 60 to 90 minutes. And this was first quantified by Harvard Medical School and Boston Children's Hospital in 2004. And recently, it was just quantified again by a study at Akron Children's Hospital. I think we thought that rectal temperature was so nasty it had to be correct. But it's important not to believe the rectal temperature over temporal artery temperature if they differ. The best way to confirm the reading of the temporal artery thermometer is to use a second temporal artery thermometer. Now, if both of the readings are the same, that would be strong evidence in favor of the temporal scanner. You can then follow up with another rectal temp in about an hour to see which way the rectal is headed. What if the patient's forehead is bandaged? If the forehead is inaccessible because of bandages due to head trauma, remember I said earlier vasodilation in the neck is assured with both diaphoresis and head trauma? Either from a surgeon's scalpel or a Mack truck, doesn't matter. Just touch the neck behind the earlobe, press and release the button. If behind the earlobe is covered, say with pressure dressings, just scan the part of the neck that's accessible. The whole head is bandaged and the patient has a cervical collar. Well, not a problem. We've got a few alternative sites. The femoral artery is a strong artery and it has a long history. It goes back to my time in nursing. To make the measurement, just scan across the femoral artery following the crease in the groin. Another alternate site is the lateral thoracic artery area. To make the measurement, just scan in a zigzag pattern. It's about four inches wide from the imaginary line in between the axilla and the nipple, and scanning down to the waist and back up to the level of the nipple, all the time you keep the button depressed. And here's a news flash. If you've got a fractious child, of course nobody does, tell him you were going to take a tickle temp on him, and now you're not. Usually the kids, even if they don't know what a tickle temp is, they'll want it. And the good news is, is that it works and it does tickle. Adults, though, I'll warn you, aren't wild about a tickle temp. Now as we conclude, there are some important notes on maintenance of the probe. You shouldn't use anything other than alcohol on the lens, absolutely no bleach or ammonium-based wipes. These are strong chemicals and they'll permanently etch the lens and then all of a sudden you'll have low readings. I'd suggest not even using bleach or ammonium-based wipes on the probe head as some of the liquid could leak down on the lens. It doesn't resolve itself once the lens is etched. The casing can be cleaned with any hospital-approved disinfectant, including your bleach and your ammonium-based wipes, but only alcohol, please, use on the lens. A 9-volt alkaline battery will provide approximately 15,000 readings, which is about a year of heavy usage. As nurses, we tend to blame everything on a low battery if we don't like a temperature reading, and we'll change it several times. But I assure you that this won't happen with the temporal scanner. Exogen has built in a fail-safe so that if the battery gets too low in voltage to give you an incorrect reading, it won't give you a reading at all. It will either flash on the screen or it will be just a plain screen, but you won't get a wrong reading. If it runs on a battery, how do we keep it from walking? Well, that's a good question. We have many anti-theft solutions, and it's shown on our website at exogen.com. Some of the most popular include nylon-covered steel cables, can't cut them very easily, a system that requires a return to base after a specific number of temps, we've got keyless locking wall mounts, so you don't have to carry keys, and we've got cables that can be conveniently removed if required, but only if you know how to do so. <laughs> Looks as if exogen is thought of everything. Why, thank you very much. However, the most important thing to take away from this training is proper technique. So before you leave, let's quickly review one more time. After wiping the probe head, brush away any hair or anything else that might be covering the forehead or the ear. Okay, now with the probe flush on her forehead, depress the button and keep it depressed until you are done. Slide straight across the forehead, crossing the T's, 
knock down the side of the face. Scan in a straight line to cross the T's and you'll never miss the artery. Continue to hold the button down, touch the neck behind the earlobe, the perfume spot. Now you let go of the button and read the temperature. The temporal scanner pinpoints the highest of 3,000 temperatures to provide the most accurate temperature possible. Thank you very much for your time. If you have any other questions or you want some more information, please visit our website, exogen.com, for the product information, but go to tathermometry.org for any clinical information that you might need. If you didn't take a pocket card when you signed in, be sure you take one when you leave. And thank you again for the time you spent.